But I don't know. I'm having a hard time believing that a coding problem would cause 2,500 flights in the United States alone to be canceled across basically all major airlines. Mere hours ago, the World Economic Forum shared a video entitled this, a cyber attack with COVID-like characteristics. The COVID-19 pandemic has shaken our economies and societies to the core and shown us how vulnerable we are to biological threats. In the digital world, similar risks are being overlooked right now. A cyber attack with COVID-like characteristics would spread faster and further than any biological virus. Its reproductive rate would be around 10 times greater than what we've experienced with the coronavirus. To give you an idea, one of the fastest worms in history, the 2003 slammer sapphire worm, doubled in size approximately every 8.5 seconds, infecting over 75,000 devices in 10 minutes and almost 11 million devices in 24 hours. Fortunately, at least until now, cyber attacks have not impacted our health the way pandemics have, but the economic damages, and therefore the impact they have had on our daily lives, have been equal and sometimes even greater. The only way to stop the exponential propagation of a COVID-like cyber threat is to fully disconnect the millions of vulnerable devices from one another and from the internet. All of this in a matter of days. A single day without the internet would cost our economies more than 50 billion US dollars. And that's before considering the economic and societal damages should these devices be linked to essential services, such as transport or healthcare. They shut down the entire metro system for Washington, D.C. As the digital realm increasingly merges with our physical world, the ripple effects of cyber attacks on our safety just keep on expanding at a faster pace than what we're preparing for. COVID-19 was known as an anticipated risk. So is the digital equivalent. Was COVID-19 known as an anticipated risk? Let's be better prepared for that one. The time is now. Three days ago. Interestingly, a lot of people are also comparing the Microsoft outage today, the CrowdStrike outage, whatever we want to label it, to a movie that just came out a few months ago, the movie that was directed in part by the Obama family, Leave the World Behind. Interestingly, this only impacted Microsoft. And as we learned today, it apparently doesn't even take a security issue or a cyber attack for something like this to happen. All it takes is a content update. Different banks were unable to help you withdraw your funds. Credit card and debit card companies couldn't process your payments. And then almost immediately, everything starts getting restored. Everybody immediately jumps on the bandwagon thinking this has to be a cybersecurity issue. This has to be a cyber attack or a hack or some sort of really extreme issue that the average public would never have expected. Clearly, this is electronic warfare in our increasingly digitized age. <sighs> I'm really, I'm really ready to move to the woods. I'm ready. Who's with me? We ride at dawn, people. But the good news is, at least as of this afternoon, the situation seems to have somewhat been resolved. There are still millions of people stuck in airports across the world. Many people are starting to ask themselves if stuff like this is actually a test run for something in the future. I know, I know that sounds so ridiculously tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist of us to suggest. How on God's green earth would this be used as a test run for things in the future? But the crazier all of this gets and the more interconnected all of this gets, I don't fault people for asking that question. Maybe it is or maybe it isn't. But I think the real underlying implication of people asking that question to begin with matters more. And that's this. Why do people have literally negative trust in any public cultural institution today? In entertainment, in the media, in tech, the lack of trust in our public institutions has arrived in 2024 due to very, very valid reasons. And the continued corruption from people in positions of power wielding that power to silence, shut down, obfuscate the average individual in society is pushing people closer and closer to the edge to a breaking point. 
I don't know that there will be another IT outage to this scale anytime soon or even again. I don't know that there could be an actual cyber attack to the scale of a COVID style shutdown of our entire world or worse as predicted predicted by the World Economic Forum. I don't know what the future of media looks like. I don't know how this will impact elections, but I do know this. People are done. Young people, old people, rich people, poor people, everyone from everywhere. We're done. We're done being told what to think by people in positions of power. We're done having to rely on gajillionaires to access the most basic goods and services for our everyday lives. We're done being forced to consume propaganda for media instead of listening to people just be honest about how they feel about things. We're done with every single thing under the sun that we used to love, Star Wars and the Lord of the Rings and anything else being turned into some sort of political talking point by people desperate to cling to any sort of relevance in society. We're done. And that might seem like a scary position for us to be in because we don't necessarily know what's next. But I honestly have a lot of excitement, hope, and anticipation in a positive way for what happens now. So glad to be back for all of our exciting content after my wedding and honeymoon. And I am so, so grateful for each and every one of you helping to make all of what we do possible. I especially want to shout out our two sponsors of today's stream who help to support all of our incredible content. First, our friends over at Public Square, changing culture from the inside out on the entrepreneurial front by allowing more uh, than 100,000 small businesses across the United States to share their products, food that you eat, clothes that you wear, people to help you do your taxes, coffee shops, and more that you know will be pro-family, pro-freedom, and pro-faith. If you guys haven't already made the switch to Public Square away from stuff like Amazon and Target, you absolutely need to. You can check them out at publicsquare.com. And I especially want to thank our friends over at Hallo America. Uh, and frankly, the world's largest Christian prayer app featuring thousands upon thousands of prayers, guided meditations, podcast episodes, history lessons, mental health resources, and more. If anything's been abundantly clear in the last few days, prayer is bringing people back together, and it should never be our last line of defense in America or anywhere else around the world. It should always be our first line of offense against evil. Please, if you haven't already, consider downloading Halo just to check it out and make prayer a more normal part of your daily routine. You can get a three-month free trial for all of the content that Halo has on their incredible platform. If you go right now to hallow.com, H-A-L-L-O-W.com slash Isabel, I-S-A-B-E-L. And extra special thank you to the team over at Rough Greens. The more we are talking about nutrition lately, the more I'm realizing that processed food for human beings is just as scary as processed food for our doggies. Rough Greens calls the modern dog food industry dead food, and it's really not hard to understand why once you start looking into this yourself. So they have developed an additive, not a supplement, but something that you add on to your dog's existing diet to help make up for the nutritional deficits that exist in the kibble industry. It works just like a protein powder. You take a little scoop, you put it on top of your dog's existing food, and it is full of antioxidants, minerals, vitamins, everything to support your dog's health to help them be the best they can possibly be. They are offering you guys a free jumpstart trial pack to try at home with your doggies and take it from my puppy Liberty. She loves it and we use it every single day. If you go to roughgreens.com, R-U-F-F-Greens.com. I have some really big announcements tomorrow on the stream regarding the direction of our show moving forward. We're going to be switching up how we deliver you content to give you more content to cover more stories, to get more in your guys's hands every single day. And we're going to talk about that tomorrow with all kinds of other exciting updates on what comes next in the chapter of Miss Isabel Brown. I should say Mrs. Isabel Belcher because your girl is married now. But with the show, with our short form content and everything in between, I'm so excited for you guys to see what we've been working on for the first half of this year. And just know Politically, religiously, culturally, content wise and everything else, truly the best is yet to come. Keep the faith. Do not be afraid. Keep demanding the truth. Keep sharing goodness in our broken world. And one day at a time, we are going to take our culture back.